Welcome back viewers. It's been a while since I put together a video on my mini tractor project so I thought I'd start with my engine progress. I wanted to put my old John Deere Model E engine to better use. I got it about 20 years ago back when I had hair and apparently when it was socially acceptable to wear sandals and jeans. It was in really good shape but it's been more of a conversation piece than a working machine. I decided to use this as the power plant for a mini tractor project I've been thinking about so I needed to get this tore down and overhauled. Roll starts, there's just a handle on the flywheel, right, so you got to roll it over. The first order of business was draining the fluids. Most of these types of engines have an open system integral water tank for cylinder cooling. There's no pressure, no radiator, no flow, it's just a gallon of coolant that acts like a heat sink. It's filled through a large opening in the top of the casting and it drains by a three quarter pipe plug at the bottom portion of the cylinder. Because of this open design, this is prone to collecting a lot of junk. In my case, there was a whole lot of debris like leaves, grass clippings, and dead bug carcasses that I needed to flush out. I got most of the junk out just by poking and prodding through the drain port and then trying to scrape it out from the top end as well and then I hit it with a couple of shots of compressed air just to break all that stuff loose this little guy is only rated for one and a half horsepower at 600 rpm but it's all cast iron construction which makes it really really heavy i'm using my overhead here um, so i can remove it from the carriage and then reposition it on my rolling table so i can disassemble it easier On the base of the unit is a sheet metal fuel tank that is oriented below the plane where the mounting flange is located. It was necessary to use some scrap 4x4 lumber to stabilize it up above the table by this flange and prevent damage to the tank. Thank you. 
This model is nice because it is fully sealed from the elements. Other types of hit and miss engines have an open or exposed crankcase. Cool to look at, but not practical for outdoor use. With the oil drained, I remove the upper cover. And this is a little tricky because of how it attaches a dust cover for the magneto. This uh, magneto cover needs to have three fasteners removed in order to separate it from the upper cover, which then can come off the engine. Underneath you can see the simple gearing that connects the crank, the cam gear, and the magneto drive. The oil condition is rarely clean. There is a lot of exhaust blow-by on these types of engines, and generally it puts a lot of carbon into the crankcase. So later I would use some super clean to degrease it and remove all the sludge. It's difficult to see here, but below the crank is a small oil sump. There's a slinger paddle on the governor drive, and that's all that's used for lubrication. Next I remove the flywheels. These are secured to the crankshaft with a tapered keyway and they were painted on pretty good. It's really important to note the orientation of this slight taper. Uh, it's pretty subtle but if you try to force it off in the wrong direction you can easily end up fracturing the cast iron hub, especially if you use power tools. I ended up using a steering hub puller and then a two jaw puller to get these broken free. Some patience, uh, a little bit of WD-40, and an air impact on the lowest power setting did the job without too much trouble. Not seen here is a 4 inch flat belt pulley that mounts concentric to the flywheel on either the left or the right hand side and it uses three bolts and lock nuts. Uh, these attachment holes uh, are what I used for the puller.
The magneto came off next. It's connected by two bolts from the bottom side, which are accessed from inside of the inspection cover on the left side of the engine. So I took that off and then I scraped out all the accumulated gunk from underneath. That's the major disassembly. I didn't have a good video for the cylinder head and exhaust pushrod removal, so I'll show how all that all goes back together in a later video, or at least show how the mechanics work. Off camera, I dismantled most of the other components and then organized them all for cleanup. At this point, I could tip the unit over on its side and remove the fuel tank and the divider plate below. I'll show more of this also in a future video when I reassemble the engine. So that pretty much wraps up the video. Uh, stay tuned for my next chapter when I strip and paint this guy and prepare it for reassembly. I'll also finish up the paint job on the transmission for this project that was rebuilt in the previous video. I appreciate all the positive comments. Like and subscribe to see the next chapter in this project. And thank you all for watching.